was one of 14,000 Cuban children who were airlifted out of Cuba without their parents. At the age of 12, I found myself um, as hundreds of thousands of refugees before me, homeless, without my parents, and really dependent on a system, quote unquote, right, to take care of me and provide a safe environment for me and my two brothers. As I look back at my experience of a young refugee at the age of 12, 13, and 14, when I finally was reunited with my parents, the fact that all these people were in my life trying to help me, in some ways didn't feel that new or that strange to me because it was very much a tradition with which I had been raised. My parents always taught me and my two brothers that we were all interconnected and we were all very much part of the human family and that nobody was better and nobody was different. I don't think I started considering myself a philanthropist until other people started calling me a philanthropist. Um, I always thought that I was doing the work that I loved. I felt I was privileged to be working with nonprofits that were doing such wonderful wor work in the community and who, as I see it, were providing a level playing field for, for people that were seeking either services or counseling. So I, I must tell you that to this day, I feel humbled when I'm, when I call that particular name, when I'm called a philanthropist. Those of us who are involved in the world of philanthropy of diverse backgrounds, we need to double up our efforts. If you look at the major 50 foundations in the United States, you'll find out that the very few people of color or diverse backgrounds on their boards. And again, they're doing a fine job. They're doing, some of them are doing a terrific job. But I truly believe that innovative new ideas come about when you have a diverse group of people discussing those issues.